Go for Leadership, the podcast with Daniel and Gerd. Uh, hello and welcome for today's episode of the Go for Leadership podcast. My guest today is Irina Popduna, and I'm very happy to have her uh, as a guest today. Go for Leadership interviews. Irina, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Daniel. I'm uh, really excited to be here uh, on this podcast and uh, talk about my favorite topic of all. <laughs> Yeah, leadership. Perfect. <laughs> leadership. And I think that's a great uh, uh, topic to get started with. But before that, give us or our listeners a quick introduction of yourself. Who is Irina? Uh, okay, um, gladly. Uh, so uh, I started uh, my career as a Scrum Master or a Project Manager uh, originally. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, I became an Agile Coach or Consultant for the companies. Uh, so The companies that I typically work with are startups uh, and uh, some of those uh, early stage uh, enterprise uh, companies. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, I just uh, became a little bit envious uh, of my customers uh, and I decided to start my own company as well. Uh, and we are in business uh, for four years now. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're catering to e-commerce entrepreneurs uh, and help them with uh, tackling the shipment uh, tracking uh, and uh, multiple other challenges that are uh, that come with uh, supply chain uh, workflow. So uh, right now, I'm still uh, very. I'm, I'm still uh, in between uh, and I'm still uh, transitioning between uh, the two roles uh, because uh, when I'm working with the customer companies, uh, I typically uh, keep the stance of uh, servant leadership and I uh, lead uh, the teams in a very different way uh, than I lead as an executive uh, because uh, the, there is a subtle difference between those two uh, stances and uh, you definitely understand the challenges of uh, that uh, transition. So, absolutely, absolutely, Irina. Thank you for that. And you mentioned that one of the major topics that we have in common, and we talked about that in the, in the, before the recording started, uh, is leadership. And maybe you can give us, our listeners, your definition of leadership or what does leadership to you personally? Yeah. Well, uh, usually when uh, this question is asked, uh, so people throw around some abstract terms uh, that don't have any Uh, like any substance uh, to uh, really uh, grasp and understand. Uh, so uh, I just want to uh, go uh, go back to uh, the metaphor. Uh, so let's imagine uh, that there is a group of people, they are tourists and they are just walking together uh, somewhere uh, and uh, they are casually interacting with one another. So uh, there is no, uh, in this group, really, there is no nothing that connects them. Uh, they just enjoy uh, each other's company and they go somewhere. But uh, things drastically change uh, if, for example, they are climbing a mountain uh, together and then there is a huge boulder uh, in their way that they need to either go around or to they need to go back or like uh, there is an obstacle that they need to overcome. And that's exactly where the leadership actually uh, starts uh, because uh, that's when the group of individuals becomes a team essentially uh, tasked to overcome that obstacle uh, that they have in their way. Uh, and leadership uh, is an emergent quality uh, because if there is uh, a leader, there should be followers uh, because the leader doesn't exist without the, uh, the, the following. And uh, in that case, uh, leadership is this uh, innate uh, skill or ability uh, to lead uh, when the circumstance uh, actually call for this leadership. And it becomes a little bit more uh, interesting uh, when we step uh, outside of this example and uh, start uh, thinking about servant leadership and uh, leadership in the knowledge uh, workers world. Because when there is knowledge worker, uh, there is knowledge work involved, uh, it means that the outcome of this work is undefined. We don't know what is good until we try to do it uh, and we iterate uh, and we start doing it uh, in the most uh, appropriate way for our customers. So we actually uh, have this uh, value in mind uh, and uh, we try to deliver it to our customers. So that's uh, when the leadership takes a little bit of a different uh, aspect to it because uh, here you need to nurture your followers uh, or essentially employees or your colleagues, you need to nurture them so that they can express their best uh, creative qualities to solve the, uh, this uncertain um, 
uncertain obstacle that is uh, that is before them. So in case uh, of a boulder, uh, that boulder could be anywhere and it could be any shape. And you don't know what the outcome is going to be uh, unless uh, you try to do something and uh, you just literally take a step uh, and uh, go there. And there is another uh, thing that uh, really the leadership in this case would be still uh, keeping the vision of what exactly you want to see in the future. So we are, we are still uh, catering to this result that we have in the future, but it's uh, undefined and it could be anything and unless it doesn't fit with the vision. So the vision is kind of like a filter uh, or the guideline that uh, helps us uh, achieve the actual objective that we have. Uh, I hope that explains it a little bit because uh, leadership is a very interesting topic and we could take different turns. <laughs> Absolutely, Irina. I would say this is the most um, uh, pragmatic and most, uh, uh, I, I can't find an adjective actually for that, but a, a very great uh, example how how you can define it uh, as well as how you can imagine different uh, let's say challenges that come or arises with with uh, a role being a leader right to move such a bunch of people or a group first of course to to interact with with individuals but also to form such a group and, and uh, guide them um, you mentioned in your introduction something that i want to um, uh, tackle a little bit um, you worked as a consultant and now you become a CEO. Maybe you can outline a little bit your daily challenges or um, yeah, your routines in order to match those two worlds, right? Yeah, well, uh, it's a constant challenge, uh, I would say, because uh, as uh, I became a CEO, I still consult uh, the, like the select few of the clients uh, that uh, I worked with before. So uh, when it comes to uh, actually assessing what the company is doing and uh, how well we are, uh, we are going forward with uh, their uh, setup, their, their org structure, like I, I see that uh, what I have to do for them is something that I usually have to do for my own company as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because whenever we are uh, stepping into this uh, like pr productive uh, executive uh, mindset, uh, we need to just achieve the goals, we need to grow the company, uh, more sales, more efficiency, more that, more this. Uh, we uh, tend to slip into this command and control mindset. But for some of my clients and, uh, clients and my exec the executive that I work with, Uh, this is the only mindset they operate in. <laughs> and they don't have the other uh, end of the spectrum to compare it to. Uh, because uh, in, in this world, uh, is, uh, in the executive world, uh, we, we have to be efficient uh, to keep the company alive, to achieve obje objectives, or to take the market share. Uh, but when it comes to what is best for the company, how the company should adapt and learn, and how the company should be not only efficient, but also going in the right direction and should be learning from the customers, essentially, that uh, shape the demand for the uh, company's product. We have to take uh, this different stance. And that's exactly what I uh, help the companies that I work with uh, realize, that they need to allow their uh, employees to learn, to inspect, to adapt, uh, and to really uh, follow what the market uh, is doing uh, so that they don't miss the boat. Because yes, you can be efficiently going forward uh, in one single direction, but you could miss the targets altogether <laughs> if the, the, whole, uh, the whole thing is just changing. If a playing field uh, is changing, it, like let, let's uh, imagine that we were playing football, but at some point everyone started playing basketball. Like <laughs> you will be efficiently playing football, but it's not going to cut it. Anyway. No, exact, exactly, and I think that that's something I'm. I'm... I'm really wanting to dig uh, into it because as a CEO, everybody is looking at you, right? Everybody yeah. expects guidance from you. Um, everybody expects also uh, orientation and direction. On the other hand, everybody also wants to be part of taking a decision or maybe um, shaping, let's say, the, the, the guidance or the strategy of a company. So how do you, um, let's say, 
switch between on the one hand of course knowing that you need to like you said right you need to find the best efficient and the most effective way of the company to operate as well as to make money getting the job done uh, fulfilling clients needs uh, and not discussing 10 times i'm of course uh, extra uh, uh, polluting a little bit but how do you match that and knowing of course what is the right thing to do with uh, uh, what is happening on the ground yeah well, uh, the thing is, uh, I think the key word uh, that uh, can outline what I do is uh, trust. Mm -hmm. Because when we hire employees uh, that uh, have certain skill sets and uh, certain proficiency, uh, and we need to trust their judgment and we need to allow them to fail, uh, essentially, uh, to try again and adjust uh, based on their learning. Uh, and we need to uh, step back uh, a bit because it's almost like uh, what uh, Steve Jobs said once. Uh, so we, we we cannot allow ourselves to hire professionals and then tell them what to do. We need we mm -hmm. hire them uh, for them to tell uh, what <laughs> tell us what to do. So uh, I uh, believe that this is the perfect uh, like the, the perfect uh, divider between the two mindsets. So. Mm -hmm. uh, if I catch myself uh, sometimes like uh, micromanaging or trying to tweak things around uh, certain people, I start questioning uh, my, my actions. And that's when I catch myself that I should be uh, employing all those practices that I teach the companies uh, to do. Uh, so again, uh, facilitated ideation, uh, where people are expressing all their ideas because uh, during brainstorming, it's very easy for the CEO uh, to tell uh, everyone what exactly uh, what exactly they want. But um, th there was this uh, interesting quote, I don't remember from which book, but uh, the CEO's words weigh a ton. That's why I need to keep silent. If, they mm -hmm. want, uh, if I want some creative ideas from my uh, team, I need to really, uh, really step back a little bit uh, and let them uh, actually express whatever they have. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually the result of this uh, is much uh, better than what I was expecting, because usually people, uh, when they're given enough freedom for creativity, uh, they come up with things that uh, I, uh, as a professional, couldn't have come up with. Uh, because, uh, again, when we, we combine uh, two people with different strengths, we don't get two people, we get three, because we have like, this emerging quality of uh, getting uh, more creative ideas and better uh, quality of a result. And again, mm, it might be uh, counterintuitive, but sometimes we need to just give them the ability to try things and see what comes out of it. Uh, and then uh, all the germs, they start uh, to become uh, visible. Because yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's very hard to see uh, like how people are spending uh, maybe like 20 hours researching certain topic. And then you're saying like, mm, yeah, well, we spent 20 hours researching the topic. What's the outcome? Like, what do we do now? <laughs> give, me the, give me the steps. <laughs> I, I like I like your way uh, because at the end um, it, it is also uh, exactly what is leadership meaning as well, right? Work on yourself, uh, take you a step back in order to let the creativity also explore itself, right? I mean, there are different ways to come to Rome uh, and sometimes it's maybe a way that uh, you as CEO have not mentioned or have not think, thought about yet. So um, I think that's, that's something... Um, uh, most likely very interesting for, for all of us to reflect sometimes because uh, uh, we, I think, are always in situations like um, like you mentioned and uh, sometimes it's good to step back, listen or ask the right questions, right, uh, for your employees. You mentioned one very important element by hiring people, which is trust. And I also believe in, in, in trust in people. I believe in the good of people. So how do you select, what is your selection process of finding people that you can trust and, and people that you are confident that they will make the right decision for your company? Mm, yeah, well, my, uh, my selection process starts from uh, seeing if a person is the right fit with the team. 
uh, because uh, we, uh, as uh, as I have a background of an agile coach, uh, we started from uh, total transparency and openness. Uh, so there is uh, open communication between all the team members so that uh, they don't rely on me uh, as the solo uh, comment uh, giver. So like, okay, we're going this way. <laughs> like, are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? This is, this is the usual way of command and control. Uh, so uh, I uh, select those people who are self-reliant uh, and sufficiently uh, educated. So uh, I usually uh, prefer to work with professionals. Uh, we don't, uh, we don't, like I have experimented with uh, un, like uh, not experienced uh, fresh hires that uh, this is their first uh, employment. Uh, and typically, it doesn't work out uh, that well uh, because they are not uh, they are not sufficient sufficiently educated, and they don't have the skills uh, to actually solve the problems that uh, demand some creativity and experience. Uh, so that's why uh, we prefer to work with experienced uh, employees. And uh, coming back to transparency, uh, with transparency, I mean uh, that the person uh, when they say uh, that they are going to perform certain task. They typically perform the task and they have some tangible results uh, in the end. Uh, and uh, if, we're, if something goes wrong, we just uh, openly communicate about that. So I'm not going to be online today because, uh, and then the reason goes. Uh, so there shouldn't be uh, some kind of uh, black box uh, environment where the person just takes the task, disappears for two months, and then comes back with an outcome. That is totally unrelated to everything that the team is doing. Uh, and uh, they are, again, uh, a lot of things, they demand, uh, demand communication, open communication, frequent communication, and, uh, uh, I mean, collaborative ideation. Uh, because, uh, and if a person is not uh, ready for that kind of environment, I'm going to reject their, can, uh, their candidacy uh, even if, uh, they have the best skills in the world. So transparency over uh, over like the best skills for the job. Because again, uh, it's not, uh, for me, uh, it's not possible to just send uh, some emails and then wait for six weeks uh, for something to get done. <laughs> That's uh, not typically what I'm looking for. Yeah. No, I agree. And I also would say or add to it that uh, trust is uh, gained by reliability and constant, let's say, results or, or what you mentioned, right? Uh, if you say you deliver it by end of business today, you will deliver it by end of business today. Without or any present excuse. a good enough reason, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or right. present a good enough reason why you would send it tomorrow or whatever. And the same is, of course, with a client supplier relationship. Uh, you only can gain trust if you are a reliable partner uh, and uh, prove what you promise uh, and uh, deliver what you have promised. So I completely agree with you. Um, a higher culture or mindset or skills and skills, something that um, you, if there is a little gap, you may, let's say, easily can train or, or uh, educate. Yes. Uh, if a person so, is uh, if a person is trainable or coachable, uh, it's always a possibility to uh, make them the right fit or uh, help them uh, gain the right skill. But if uh, that's not in place, uh, unfortunately, there isn't much I can do <laughs> about uh, that kind of candidate. Uh, knocking to the topic of skills, I think uh, I'm a believer um, that um, agile methods and methodologies. Um, are not an excuse for complete, let's say, anarchy and uh, disastrous structures. So it's all the opposite. It obliges us to really follow certain procedures in order to come to a certain result, right? I mean, it gives a lot of, uh, um, let's say, community impulse as well as well. But at the end, it requires a lot of um, structure and uh, professionalism in order to execute the uh, ideation process uh, completely successfully. So mm -hmm. how do you train your staff that maybe has the right culture fit and is also reliable and, and trustful? So how do you train or educate your people not being the uh, teacher, let's say, and obviously, no, 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 it's not this the right way. It's not, not that the right way. So how do you train or educate your staff in order so that they can fulfill um, let's say, good procedures and, and agile methods? Uh, yeah, well, uh, 
Coming to the beginning of your question, uh, there is one uh, interesting thing that I want to uh, mention is that the degrees of freedom, like if you give too much freedom, uh, people become disoriented. They don't even know what is right or wrong and they are kind of like going in circles or even uh, they don't know which step is the right one uh, after this. So uh, uh, at first, uh, when we start working with a new employee, uh, we uh, give them a very limited amount of information that's related to their direct task uh, so that they can uh, explore the system, they can explore uh, their new role uh, and uh, understand like who are the people around them and what exactly they are doing. So we start uh, small uh, and uh, laser focused. Uh, because otherwise, uh, what tends to happen is that the person becomes disoriented and they start uh, researching some things that are not even relevant. Uh, so after that, uh, in boarding period, uh, usually people uh, start understanding uh, like the basics of uh, how we work, uh, who is who, uh, where I, where I sh like, where should I go in case I have a question, uh, or whom should I ask uh, in case I uh, need some assistance, uh, and. Uh, from day one, uh, I always encourage uh, everyone to start uh, asking questions if we have a question. Uh, if uh, like if you're unsure what you need to be doing as well, uh, just uh, that's like the best blocker to have uh, because we have a lot of work <laughs> and we can definitely tell you uh, what, where exactly your assistance is needed. So it's uh, mostly through uh, subtle uh, habit forming uh, routines. That's uh, how we train them. There isn't a PowerPoint that we just uh, show to them, or there isn't some kind of onboarding training that they go through. Uh, those things help, yes, uh, but they uh, are easily uh, skippable, I would say. Mm -hmm. Because even if a person is trained or if they went through a corporate training, it doesn't mean that they really understand every word and uh, they really understand how to apply it in a real situation. So that's uh, why we rely on uh, almost like tribal uh, habit forming uh, routines uh, that don't uh, form right away. Uh, if a person had an agile uh, working, had experience working in an agile environment before, uh, they would not be uh, they not they would not be disoriented. They will just uh, start working right away. But some of those uh, people who come from uh, waterfall waterfall environments or some command and control uh, environments, they kind of uh, get this uh, like. <laughs> I don't know, like this uh, adjustment period uh, where they uh, literally switch uh, over to this uh, open communication. And if they need help, they literally say that they need help uh, without feeling ashamed uh, that somebody is going to feel that they are not professional enough or something. Because that's the very frequent uh, fear that I see in the new hires that they uh, just don't want to ask questions because they are afraid that they will be fired on the spot because they uh, didn't understand something. Because they, they assume they should understand everything about the business. Yeah. I like that. Now, um, talking about uh, the adjustments, let's say, or the development of, of people, um, I think you give a good glimpse on how you do that. Um, maybe you can give us a little bit of a few, what would be the advice for the younger Arena when she started uh, her career? Um, and uh, yeah, what would be the, the tips and tricks you would give her uh, when she started? Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, when it comes to the younger Irina, I think uh, I would have uh, challenged her beliefs that uh, you should expect the results, uh, like the perfect result right away. Uh, because uh, it was one of the things that uh, I, I I tended to, to do uh, before. Uh, so uh, we should give people uh, freedom to iterate and be chill about it uh, to a certain extent. So we don't have to stop a process mid-sprint uh, mid or something. Uh, to really deliver uh, deliver something that we, we believe needs to be delivered. So that's one. Uh, the other thing is uh, really getting crystal clear on the vision, uh, mission, and values. I know that uh, everyone uh, who is from the corporate world, they already get this kind of like uneasy feeling, like, okay, again, vision, mission, values, no. <laughs> Because we, we kind of get this allergy to those terms because they are very uncertain. Uh, at some point uh, in my life, I read the book uh, called The Fifth Discipline. Uh, and uh, there, uh, even though uh, this is more of a statistics or uh, like more of a process uh, related book, uh, the author actually explains what the vision is. So the vision is uh, very personal. 
the vision shouldn't be uh, created by a committee. Uh, it's a very personal vision for the future, uh, future state of events uh, or uh, of uh, people and uh, our, uh, I mean, sales, et cetera, et cetera. So the vision is a future state of events that you really want to happen. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it should be grounded in reality because like vision is not a goal. Uh, goal could be hit, uh, but the vision is just this uh, this guiding light or guideline uh, that helps you stay on course. Uh, and uh, in Agile, uh, we are constantly course correcting, so that uh, increases the chances that we'll actually get there. So yeah, and uh, okay, so vision uh, helps you stay on track. Mission uh, helps you select the right people who have the same uh, kind of uh, values as you do. Because mission is very concise, very very short, and everyone understands it. Uh, so it not only uh, centers around uh, the value that we deliver to the customers, but also the life values that our employees have and uh, what we do. And then the uh, third one, the values, they literally help you uh, to make those hiring and firing decisions, uh, make uh, all the things that uh, are usually relying on ambiguous terms, like, oh, I have a feeling that this person needs to be fired, but why? And if you have very clear values and you understand that the person violated the value of uh, transparency or like care or something else, uh, this, is exactly, this is exactly the right grounds to fire on. It's not about uh, the scale. It's not about the person not being on time. It's about something else that is uh, much bigger than just a simple, I don't know, like first strike or the first strike. <laughs> that's uh, usually the car corporate companies uh, employ. I, I like your um, reflection on vision, mission and values uh, because it, it makes it so handy and so uh, so operative, so uh, re re reliable, uh, a real, realistic um, that everybody can can uh, use that as a uh, reflection on himself if he has the right vision, mission, uh, and values for his own company. Irina, thank you so much for being our guest today. It has been a real pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Daniel, for having me here. And uh, yeah, and I just wanted to say, say like one, one last word about the values uh, is that uh, there was a company that I worked with uh, that I uh, asked them to write their mission, vision, and values. Like it's been the six months they are delaying this process. They're saying like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna write it later. Write it down. <laughs> like if there is one thing that uh, I could uh, just communicate to everyone, like write it down right away and then uh, communicate it clearly uh, to the whole company. And uh, there shouldn't be a person in the company who can't recite uh, what the values are or what the vision is and uh, what the mission is. Go for Leadership, the podcast with Daniel and Gerd. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go for Leadership, the podcast.